Hello and uh, thank you for watching. My name's James uh, and you're about to see a recording of a presentation that I made while I was in uh, Radio 2.0 in Paris yesterday. And that's the reason why these slides are mostly in French uh, and not in English. But don't worry, I will be speaking in English uh, so you can enjoy and watch along. Uh, the title of this presentation is, Is Engagement the Key to Success for Radio 2.0? Uh, but firstly, let me tell you who I am. Um, I'm a radio guy. Uh, I used to work as a radio DJ uh, 20 or so years ago. Uh, and then I worked at Virgin Radio in London. I was in charge of their website, their new platform strategy. Then at the BBC on the Radio iPlayer. And now I'm working for a lot of different organisations to help them understand what's next in this world. I also run a media website, which is Media UK. It's a great place to come to learn about the UK's radio industry. And since you're watching this online, I would heartily recommend you to open Media UK in another browser window right now and look through as many pages as you possibly can. That would be a good thing. So, is engagement the key to success for Radio 2.0? This slide actually shows a bunch of postcards. And they're postcards sent in to the BBC World Service from their audience in India earlier on this year. Um, these postcards, I think, really prove that radio listeners do want to engage with their favourite radio station. And so, of course, I think that engagement is important. But first, I'd like to talk about what isn't the key to success. What we have to do, uh, what we have to stop doing for the good of radio. So, first in my list of what we have to stop doing for the good of radio is... Well, we, talk, we care too much about radio broadcasting platforms, don't we? We spend so much time talking about DAB+, Plus or DMB, or DRM, or HD radio, or internet, satellite, AM, FM. You know what? Nobody else cares, genuinely. Your audience doesn't care. The only thing your audience cares about is the content, and then when, where to find it as well. Um, and let me show you some reasons why I think that. Firstly, radio is a multi-platform medium now. Less than two-thirds of all radio in the UK is done through AM and FM. Less than two-thirds. In the UK, DAB accounts for 20%. That's one-fifth of radio listened to, but there are other platforms there as well. And when you look at individual stations, then the changes are even more clear. Let's look at two radio stations in the UK. They're both uh, national. They both broadcast on different things other than AM and FM. And One Extra is a young urban radio station. It has a third of its audience tuning in through the television. A third of its audience tune in through the TV. For Six Music, a station aimed at 30-somethings, that number shrinks to almost zero. People are tuning in to the content they want on a device that works for them. And it, so it, it, it seems that different audiences want different content on different devices. The future of radio clearly is a multi-platform future. This is not a binary future of one platform ruling the world. Secondly, we promote the best music mix as the only reason to listen to the radio. And I think this is wrong because the best music mix isn't the music mix on a radio station. The best music mix is my music mix on my Spotify account. The best music mix for younger people is their music on YouTube. In fact, even for older people like me, it offers more than Spotify can. Here's a, I'm sure, completely legal uh, copy of uh, the Beatles' Rubber Soul uh, album. So music curation, too, is no longer radio's unique selling point. Um, this is a program on uh, Radio 6 Music. It's very good. Um, Radcliffe and McConey, they play a great range of music. I love the music that this radio station plays. I have never heard a single show of Radcliffe and McConey, though, because I use this website. This website adds the tracks that they play to a Spotify playlist. So now I can enjoy Radcliffe and McConey without Radcliffe and McConey. And I can also enjoy, on the same device, my, uh, the music from my friends as well. Um, people who I recognise are good at picking music, like my friend Anthony here. Now, the BBC did some research on what makes good breakfast radio. I saw it at a conference recently, so I've nicked it, and here's the list. Um, good breakfast radio. Well, starting gun, the starting gun. What's happened while I slept? Uh, markers like time checks and familiar moments. Um, rhythm and emotion. Music and speech to match my moods. 
uh, human connections, hearing the first real people of the day, and the shared experience, the experience of listening together alone. I think this list is what radio is all about. This list is where radio really succeeds, not the best music mix. So what's radio good at? Well, I think it's good at talented people and a shared experience. And these are two things that automated internet music streams can't touch. Shared experience, of course, is also connection and it's also engagement, engaging with your audience. So here are a few examples from across the world of radio stations doing it right. First, here's a music radio station called Now Radio. It's in Edmonton in Canada, and I'd like you to go and have a listen to it for a bit. It calls itself Edmonton's social network. It keeps on talking about joining the conversation because you'll notice that although it's a music station, there are a lot, there's lots of speech on the air as well. They are really in touch with their audience. If you go tweeting them, they'll reply. If you text them, and text is still very important, they'll reply as well. In the first year of broadcasting, this radio station sent over one million texts, personal, uh, personal replies to their audience. And this was a year where they moved from a brand new station in the market to number one in their target demo. Number one, because they didn't ignore their audience. They engaged with them instead. And here's another example. This isn't a new radio station. You've seen it before. This is an old one in 1993 when I was working there. Now, yes, they may have marketed themselves on playing the best music for West Yorkshire, but every person who wrote in with a request was replied to in a letter. This is a letter that you can see on the screen. A small piece of dead wood that we used to send people with stamps. Um, this is a letter sent to somebody who didn't get their song played in Double the Music Month. Um, and it says, thank you for your Double the Music suggestion. There was a great response to our Double the Music Month. It wasn't possible to include your choice. Maybe you'd like to try again. What a lovely way of engaging with people. Um, they moved from a number seven in the market to a number one in the market, partially because they engaged with their audience. And finally, every one of your listeners is an individual. So we should treat them like that, I think. I think that we should engage and treat our listeners better with personalised audio. That's not just personalised advertising, that's things like travel news, community information, things that fit into the main station stream, but gives everybody a slightly different experience. In-stream means that I hear less of the things I don't want to hear and more of the things I do. And I spent a good time in Montreal recently working with the folks at Triton, who are the global leader in ad insertion. Triton have some great tools to help you and tools that are used throughout the US and Canada and in parts of Europe as well. So if we engage our audience like this, we can make them smile. And by making our audience smile, we can also help our advertisers smile too. It makes for a great future, a great future for radio if we engage with our audience. Thank you for listening, and mine's a pint. <laughs>